Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Um, in this video I'm just going to show you something that I've been working on. So <clears throat> recently I uh, I updated my, uh, I rewrote my whole website and you know I used the tools that people tell you to use. I used, uh, I used, uh, because it's just a static website you know. Uh, so I used, you know, people tell you to use Webpack and you should use uh, NPM and you should use uh, TypeScript and stuff like that. Um, so I decided to try and uh, uh, create a static website and I, w I used uh, Webpack to, uh, to be able to uh, bundle multiple HTML files together. And uh, what I realized is uh, pretty quickly was that uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, there were a lot of problems, like just to get the feature to be able to uh, include one HTML file in another HTML file was pretty difficult to get that working. So, you know, I decided to write my own, uh, basically to write my own, my first initial idea was to write my own uh, webpack thing or static website bundler um, <clears throat> but then I realized that I might as well just create my own uh, then I went a bit further and I made it a whole uh, templating language instead so I wrote my own templating language that I can use to uh, generate static websites and stuff it's it actually works with all kind of content not not just uh, not just HTML you can use it anywhere so I just want to show you a bit in this video how it works. Um, <clears throat> what we can do first is actually uh, load up this because I can show you the documentation. So if we do that and we paste this here, we can read my documentation here for my language. So I'd, right now it's just called GPP and it's short for General Preprocessor. Mm, probably will change the name later and it says here not just for HTML it can be used anywhere and here's a basic uh, example of how to use it and some documentation of all the syntax stuff so the first thing we have here is a compute block and this block uh, is telling the uh, preprocessor that here is some logic that I want you to compute so in there you you can call functions and and uh, stuff like that. And this block is a bit interesting. Uh, it's I call it a virtual file block because everything that is inside of these um, is just treated as if it was a completely new file. Um, so anything in here will actually be will not be computed b by default. And actually, the whole document is by default wrapped in uh, in these. Um, the con not really, but they are. The document is interpreted as if it was wrapped in these. Um, this block is also used to tell the uh, preprocessor that something should be evaluated lazy. So things in here will not be evaluated. Uh, unless you tell them to, to be evaluated, basically. And then we have uh, the uh, we, uh, the language only has two data types right now, and it's strings and lists. Uh, here's here's uh, how you would define a list. You can do it with uh, parentheses or uh, brackets. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, every item in that list is separated by new line or space. And then we have uh, some built-in functions. We have a map and it's, if you have used JavaScript, for example, you know what that this is. Uh, it does what you expect. Uh, it takes an iterator, iterable as the first argument and a yield function as the second argument. And by the way, every function call uh, expects a list to the right of it. Uh, where the arguments go. So you can actually use parentheses or you can use brackets. It just uh, expects a list after it. I'll show you later. And then we have a cat function. By the way, this language is has some inspiration from the shell. So if you're familiar with uh, with the uh, 
uh, GNU core utils uh, uh, um, binaries, the, the commands like ls cat and stuff like that. I'm ha this language is heavily inspired by that. So we have the cat, and this function simply reads an infinite list of files, concatenates the contents and dumps it out as it is. The contents of the file are just treated as text and not evaluated. This function takes in an infinite list of strings as an argument. So basically, uh, you would you can use this to include other files, but the those files will not be interpreted by the preprocessor. Um, and then we have Kate, which is cat, uh, but with an E at the end, which stands for evaluate. So it's just, it's exactly like cat, but it actually evaluates the files as well. So you can include another template using this, and that will also be evaluated before it dumps it out. And then we have the dollar sign. This is also an inspiration from the shell. Uh, if you're in a, inside a function, uh, if you're inside a function call, you can, basically every function is sort of programs. And just like in shell, when you are uh, um, executing a binary, you can, or in in bash, for example, you can access the arguments uh, given to the program using uh, dollar signs. Uh, so in this case, you can use dollar sign zero to access the first argument of the function, dollar sign one to access the second one. Yeah, we're starting at zero. Um, that's the difference here. Okay, and here's some HTML where I'm actually using the templating language. So here is a uh, logic block, and I'm telling it to evaluate whatever is inside here. And right now it's just a string saying welcome. And here I'm showcasing uh, the virtual file blocks. So this is basically the same as if I would include another file. Um, <clears throat> so this has its, its own uh, uh, private scope, sort of. It's not completely true, but uh, kind of. And then I'm actually using a logic block inside of this block to render um, to render whatever is here, you know. Now, obviously, in this case here, if this was a real project, I wouldn't even need those here. I could remove them since this will, st will still be ignored. But there are some cases where these are useful. Uh, in this scenario here, they are actually not useful. And here is, I'm showcasing how to use the map, map function. So as you can see, I'm calling map uh, within this logic box, and then I'm giving it a list. This whole thing here is actually a list, and it has another list inside of it, which is a list of uh, four strings. And then I have a, a yield here, um, and this is what I want the map to convert these two. I want it to convert them to Lee elements. And here, in this case, uh, this this token here is actually useful because uh, this means that I can use Lee tags here without um, the preprocessor trying to interpret this as as logic. And then I can use a logic block inside of the Lee tag instead. And I'm using the dollar sign zero to access the first argument sent to this uh, yield. And the first argument in this case is going to be be the strings in the list. And here I'm showcasing the cat. Um, and here I'm just dumping out the main.c file in this project. The, uh, the language is written in, uh, in C. And um, then I'm using the, I'm showcasing the Kate uh, uh, function and I'm, I'm giving it the hello.html, which actually is a, uh, is a file that can be evaluated. So I'm using the E here to say that it's going to be evaluated. Now this is pretty cool. You can also integrate other languages into your templates. There's no restrictions at all. So for example here, I'm using Python to render uh, a uh, UL uh, list. Um, and here are the the uh, the items that I want to convert to Lee tags, and here you can see I do want this list to be rendering Node.js though, so here I'm saying I'm uh, rendering a Lee um, a UL list using Node instead, so you can actually combine multiple languages inside of of um, of this uh, templating language uh, uh, templating uh, engine, and. It has a built-in 
language, um, and that's what you write inside of these logic tags. So inside of here, we're using the built-in language, but if you want to use another language, you are uh, free to just include, uh, to use uh, these uh, um, virtual file tags, and then you just specify which interpreter to use using this comment here. And here I'm telling it to use Python, and here I'm telling it to use Node. And here are some basics about these uh, uh, tokens or blocks. Uh, we've already gone through them, so if you still don't understand, the following uh, will be rendered as this. This will be rendered as this. So this just means that whatever is in here will just be ignored unless you have uh, logic tags inside of there as well. And here I'm saying you can use any interpreter you want. You can include Python like that. And here's some uh, instructions on how to install it. So let me just uh, showcase it to you. So here is the, uh, the source code on my computer. And as I said, it's written in C. We got the lexer here. We got the parser. We got the visitor. Um, the language is interpreted. It's not a compiled language. Um, Uh, because, I don't know, why would it be compiled, you know? Uh, because it's uh, it's just generating uh, output. Anyway, so let's see here. We uh, Let's actually copy, let's copy uh, the example code here, and I can show you that this actually executes. So what we can do is create a file. I'm going to create a file called uh, showcase. Dot, let's just call it index.html. And there you can see, and let's put it in here. Uh, now there's one thing I need to change though. This bin node thing, that's not where my node is. I have to do which node. And I actually have my node <coughs> in a shit folder. <coughs> so uh, I have to just put the right path here. There we go. And now as you can see, um, uh, actually let's move that index file uh, to, oh, it was here, uh, sorry. Uh, so as you can see, we have the index HTML, HTML file here. If I cat it, we can see that and this is the file. And now what I need, what I want to do is to uh, run my uh, my preprocessor over this. So right now I just call a dot out. So a dot out is the binary that is here that I've compiled. We can do this make clean make. And now the uh, template language is compiled, and I can run a dot out. And then I specify the file name that I want to run. So I'm going to specify index.html. And here you can see the HTML being generated. And you can also see some C code here. And the reason for that is because I'm catting in a C file here. So <clears throat> you can also see here that the Lee uh, generated by node is, uh, is working. And, and uh, uh, here, here's the node uh, Lee list and here's the Python Lee list. So let's open this file. Let's uh, view this in uh, in the browser. Actually, so if we if we run this uh, run our interpreter over the file again, and we just uh, and we just uh, dump it into some other file. Let's call this uh, dumped.html, and then I can do Google Chrome stable, which is my browser, and I open up the HTML file, and you can see here that it was successfully. It, it, it works uh, as it's uh, thought to work. So basically, if we do this, we can see that we can see the uh, source to the left and the result to the right. So here we have the welcome, and you can see it being generated here. Um, here's me mapping a list to HTML here. And Here's me dumping out some uh, src.main, the contents of the src.main. You can see it here. The reason why it looks weird here is because uh, the browser interprets the include tags as uh, HTML tags. 
um, but that's not uh, that's not really a problem of my uh, my templating engine. Uh, it's doing what it should. It's uh, the browser doesn't know what to do with those tags. So here we have that, and here we have uh, below will be evaluated. Below will be evaluated, and we have I'm including the hello.html, and that hello.html file looks like this. <coughs> so it's just including that. And here we have uh, the integrating other language. I really want this list to be rendered using Python, and there you go. I do want this to be rendered using Node.js though, and there you go. So I just wanted to share this with you because I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm still not done with it. I have a bunch of more things to implement before before I'm ready to ship it. I don't know. I, I'm not gonna ship it anywhere. People are free to use it however they want. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put a link to the source code in the description. Um, so yeah, um, tell me what you think, and I'll see you in our next video. Thank you.